So now in, we're in week three, class two. Last week we talked about the three modes of uh, heat transfer, and we said uh, what conduction, convection, radiation. Conduction is through solid material. Convection is through fluid, be it gas or liquid. Uh, we have two types of convection: forced, if we have a fan or a pump, or natural, is when you use the buoyancy of the fluid. And the third one is radiation, and they're all present at all time. So now I am conducting to the floor. I'm, I have natural convection around me. I'm, I'm in the air next to my body and it rises. That's natural convection. I'm also radiating. If you bring an infrared camera, you'll see that my body is radiating infrared. So actually, I purchased one. So you can play with it a little bit. Very interesting. So, huh? Actually, you can buy a camera and you put your, with your iPhone. It's like $200. There's one for like $70. You put it with the iPhone, you attach it, and you can you can use that for the filtration. If you're gonna work in uh, residential heating, that's a good way to filter look, look at your leaks. You go outside the house in the winter, and you see all the red spots. That's where you're losing heat. It's very interesting. Uh, 2002. This camera will cost you fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. This is how cheap this money got. $50,000 to get a red camera. Now you can get it for like 70 bucks. Amazing, amazing. <coughs> so we talked about the, what a good thermos do, or do. What does it do? <laughs> so thermos, the half pump insulation, that's for conduction. It has vacuum, and it has also reflective surface to counteract all three modes of heat transfer. We agree? You buy one of those Gore-Tex coats that you can go for about some years with. And if you have a, to buy a really good uh, thermal coat, if you look from the inside, where's the line in the middle? It's reflective material. And it has, inside it has some kind of bubbles, some kind of insulation. And the outside, it has some kind of plastic for the rain and for the wind. So we are preventing natural convection. You, keep, you trap the air inside the jacket, you are fighting against, against uh, radiation with the reflective coating. So if you buy one of those actually ski coats, you'll see it's not that thick. However, it has a lot of uh, 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 <coughs> to counteract all those heat loss. And also, what, what's with, what, what's with the sleeves? Usually they have rubber band. And also the way it has rubber band. Why? Trap the heat. Yeah, trap the air inside, next to your body. So uh, I go scuba diving sometimes. And when the water is very, very cold, you put a wetsuit, and the first thing they tell you when you dip in the water, yeah, open it up and let all the water get in. And close it. The water will get in, it will warm, your body will warm the water, and the water will stay there. So, Does it's a- Does that the purpose of a wetsuit though? No, that's not in this case, not if you want to warm your body. You can wait, but the, uh, you can look though, there's some space between the wetsuit and your body, that space keep going in and out, it's gonna cool your body, but if you let some water in, it will be cold a little bit, but it will warm your body, and it will be trapped inside. And that's what the jacket is doing. You have a rubber band and you sleeves on your waist so to keep the air from circulating, which is very important. And that's what you do when you sleep, when you have a blanket, you wrap it around you, or a sleeping bag, so you keep the air from circulating. Uh, so think about those aspects when you try to capture heat and keep it in one place. Okay. Uh, this equation I want you to remember till next semester, which is next year, which is the main equation for heat transfer. <coughs> heat transfer rate is referred to as Q, which equals area times K times delta T. If it looks alien to you, after a while, this is going to become your best friend. It will evolve a little bit, but it's the same concept and we can use this over and over again. So what is A? Area. Area, Area. thank you. Okay, it's thermal property. I will leave it to that. I will explain what does it mean, where does it come from, what kind of form it is, but you don't have to understand that. You just have to know where to get it. It's the property of the material. Delta T, temperature difference. So 
So when you have, so the rate of get transfer, if the area increase, what happens to the rate of heat transfer? You have a bit large area. Okay. What happens to this number? Down. No, this is, if this increases, so increase. this will increase. It's a balance, it's an equation. If the thermal property increases, it's conduct more, it will increase. If the temperature difference is big, <coughs> you will lose more heat. You put a cup of coffee in the summertime, it will take an hour to cool off. You put it in the winter, 20 minutes, it will be cold. Why? Big temperature difference. What if there is no temperature <coughs> difference? The, the coffee cup is 70 degree and the room is 70 degree. What happened to the rate? It will be zero. What happened if you multiply something to zero? Zero. If, those go, if this goes to zero, no heat transfer. That's why we have no heat transfer between rooms. The two rooms are 70 and 70, there is no heat transfer between them. Because everything wants to go to equilibrium. Make sense to keep that? Well, I will, in mind, I will think about it more and more. This is the thermal property. We can play with that a little bit by adding insulation, changing material. And this is the area. How big of an area is exposed to the outside, to the difference in temperature. The more surface area, the more heat transfer. The less surface area, the less heat transfer. That's why in this equation, and if you look at this radiator, why do we have fins? Why do we have fins? What are these fins doing? In terms of this equation, what is it doing? From one to the other. Yeah, what are they increasing? Area. Area. So that's why we have more fins. We are increasing the surface area, which means this will go up or down. Higher. If we keep this fins clean, that will serve the purpose. What happens if we have some dust and cat hair on it? Insulation, which will increase, which will decrease the thermal property. This will go down. So this will go down. Yeah. Question. Okay. So it will make more sense as we move along. So wall transmission, conduction through the wall. It depends on the wall thickness. You agree? How thick the wall is? Which uh, which part of the equation is this? It's still in the case. <laughs> How thick is the is the medium we're going through? So, conduction through the wall has to do about with the thickness of the wall. Thicker wall will conduct less than thin wall. How large is the wall? Is it a small wall or a big wall? That, that, that again goes with the area. So, thickness of the wall is hit. Second part, first part is air. Makes sense if the window is big, it's gonna let a lot of heat go. Material also goes into the same aspect here, which is the, the property. Is the, is the wall made out of wood or bricks, which conduct heat faster, wood or bricks? Bricks, in a way. And again, it depends on the material. So that's another thing. Delta T, which is a triangle is, t is the temperature difference inside and out. If the temperature inside is zero and outside, we're happy. Nothing will change. Make sense? Okay. I'm not gonna talk about this. It's confusing. <coughs> if the wall has 10 feet wide, 8 feet high, it has a window is 4 by 4. What is the area of the wall? What am I getting at here? Zero times square. So this is one of the mistakes that a lot of people do when they do heat loss. That's why I start with it, which is, uh, I want the area of the wall. The wall is made out of uh, 
What do you want it to be made made of? Stucco? Okay, stucco. So do you agree that the heat loss to the wall is different than the heat uh, loss from the window? Yes. yes. We all agree on that, right? So it will be a mistake to give the wall, the entire wall, the same heat loss. So first of all, I'm gonna find what area is the wall material and what area is the window. And that's one of the biggest mistakes, one of the most common mistakes we have in heat loss. So first of all, I'm gonna find, to find the area of the wall. I'm gonna get the total area, which is 10 times eight. Minus the window. This is wall. Total. Window. What does that give me? 80 minus uh, 16. 64. Yeah. What's square? Keep in mind, when you multiply foot times foot, that's foot square. That's area. Foot cube, volume. Again, it seems silly, but it uh, can be a bit confusing. We all understand the difference between area and volume. And area is too weak, volume is too weak. And keep the theory in mind on the wall. So this is how we get the area of the wall. If the inside of the wall is kept at 70 degrees and the outside is 20, which way the temperature move and how much is the temperature difference? So the temperature difference is going to be 50. We agree? And which way the temperature will go? Inside, outside, or outside, inside? From inside to outside. From the inside to the outside, so we're gonna lose heat. We agree? Okay. The same wall, thickness of eight inches, K value. No, I'm not gonna do this. For the, uh, I'm not gonna do too much of this math because nothing's. Uh, I did it before, but uh, no need to. I just want to get the get the concept of. Uh, let me show you something. For the sake of simplicity, we're not gonna go too much into science. Let's just use whatever. Become an installation guru, come back and revisit the K value. What is the K value? If you look it up on your phone, it's called the thermal conductivity, which is a property for the material given by scientists. Every material has thermal conductivity. Okay? For our purposes, thermal conductivity, just thinking about it, does it depend on how thick the material is? Yes. But this half an inch. It's not going to conduct as much as two inches. So the thicker, the more thermal conductivity we have. What we think about, what we want to see is the R value. The R value is already pre-calculated for you based on the thermal conductivity. And we feel this R value is based on this thickness. If we double the thickness, it's going to be double the R value. So if this is four, and you put two next to each other, so this, I put two now. What is our value? Eight. Okay? Easy enough? So, the idea here of the K value is it will increase with the thickness. So, I, was, I just want to try to explain here. But uh, don't worry about it too much as long as you understand that K is the thermal conductivity of the material and it has a relationship to do with the thickness of the material. Fair? Okay. And this can translate into something called the R value, which you can go and buy something with an R value. And if you understand what is R value, I'll be happy. <coughs> it's the R value. And something called the U factor, which is the same as the R, R value. We'll explain it in one time. But uh, for, for thermal conductivity, do not worry about it. However, just to give you an idea of thermal conductivity of material, given by a book for some material. 
What is most conductive? Aluminum is very conductive, which means the heat is going to go through it very quickly, right? Steel, glass, concrete, bricks, wood at the bottom. That vein is air. So air is a very, very good insulator if you can keep it still. The problem with air, it moves a lot. So even though it's 0.18, it's going to move a lot and do a lot of uh, convection. But these, after, if you go down to wood, rubber, see it looks very, very small, terrible conductivity, which means heat's going to have issues going through it as a resistance. It's not going to go through it very well. Meanwhile, if you have aluminum, that's pretty conductive. That's why you see windows made out of aluminum frames that lose a lot of heat through the frame. Again, windows are always an issue. Studs, pillars, structural material, you can lose a lot of heat through the aluminum or steel. They started making windows out of vinyl. Huh? That's why they started making them. They make uh, frames out of vinyl, but what is the problem with vinyl? Not as strong. Uh, no, it can be strong. Conductive. It's not as conductive. That's, which is a good thing we want. We don't want oh, to be you conductive. Want it? Oh, okay. What is the problem with the vinyl? It's expensive. No, it's expensive. No. Think. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No. As a property. Vinyl is very reactive to UV. So over time it will fade, it will dry, it will crack. Remember when we used to buy cars from the 80s and they, the dashboard made out of vinyl? After a couple of years, it starts to crack and dry out. Vinyl has issues with uh, UV. If you have uh, a boat, if you have anything made out of vinyl material, you have to treat it with, uh, with something like sunscreen. Otherwise, the UV will eat out your vinyl and eventually it will crack. Within a few years, it will fade. So vinyl has issues with UV. They're trying to make uh, UV resistance a vinyl or make some coating on it, permanent coating. But again, if it scratch out, the coating wears out, you have to reapply, otherwise it will go bad. But I think uh, now they have UV resistance vinyl. Uh, <coughs> so the K, we talked about the K value, which is the thermal property, the high thickness. thickness. Uh, so people in the field said, okay, we're not gonna worry about thermal uh, property and K factor, which is gonna, gonna give you the R value, which basically has to, they already multiplied the K with the thickness to make life easier on us. So they gave you something called the R value, and in this equation now, we can use the U factor. So, same equation here. Switch them around doesn't matter because you're multiplying, so it doesn't matter. Make sense? If it doesn't, raise your hand. Ask me. So it doesn't matter which order you go, as long as you know its multiplication should be the same. And uh, <coughs> one over the R value, so if you go, if you want to find the U factor, why do they use the U factor? Because somebody thought, yeah, you know, I don't want a fraction and divide over, I want it to multiply. So you just give me the U factor. It's easier to multiply things together to go and divide. So they transferred that R into, which is here, into a U factor. So what is the U out of R, or out of four? One over four, quarter. If you open up your, uh, you have your H22 book, to make things much easier, I complicate matters, I don't want you to do like way too much math and overwhelm yourself over and over. If you look here, in the back of the book, Yeah, it has all the new factors you have, you need, for all the materials. If you look here, they give you the new factors. If you look at page uh, 72, 
windows, U factor, U factor. So what if, if we have the U factor, we're all set. Gravity is inside and outside, and the area, you go with the measuring tape and measure. Easy? Make sense? What do you need to know? You find out the areas, you find the areas, the U factor you look up, the other T is going to be given. If you don't know what is the temperature outside, what are you going to do? There's a big table here, which every major city in the US, I'm going to give you this degree. Simple. And if not, you can go ask Uncle Google. He knows everything. You just Google what is the hottest day in Springfield, what is the wind in Springfield, you get all the data for the last 10 years. And I'm sure it has changed. Okay, so this is uh, what we need. Remember this equation? Put it in a card. Carve it on your calculator. Stash it somewhere. Put it in a card in your wallet. I don't care. And U equal 1 over R. We're good. Can I push for more information on you? Nah. Please. Very simple. I promise. Yeah. You can, you can take it. One piece. So if I took this board, which has an R value of four, and I doubled it, it is how much? Eight. Eight. But I want to put another board here, which is around six. So I'm going to put those two. So we have four and six. That's 14. So I want to get the U factor out of that. What do I do? Sandwich, keep adding layers, it's gonna add up. Again, write it down, you don't have to memorize it, put it in a card, cheat sheet, and bring it over. I just want you to understand how it, it should make sense to you. I have a walk, don't be overwhelmed, we're gonna have eight months of this. And it doesn't get more complicated than that. So, one board, our value of four. Two boards are value four or uh, eight. How do I get the U factor out of this? I add them together. One over the addition. T equals one. You plug it back. That's the T name. We'll do plenty of examples. And trust me when I say, if you understand this, you understand this semester and this semester is problem. You're gonna have this variation. You're gonna use this over and over again. Uh, just remember that the three things for heat loss is area, U factor, and delta T. And do not try to overwhelm yourself. This is something that's happening every day, everywhere. Okay? Question? Huh? Just to make you understand that K is a factor of uh, thickness. But we, in our field, everything is doing an R. And why do we use U? That's a good question. Simplicity. Is it easier to do this one or this one? Multiplying things together is easier. And most of uh, <coughs> we have 15 minutes left. <coughs> so, in a second. I want to do an example so you can solidify this before we move on. And if you look at your book, they don't want you to do math. They tell you, okay, here's the new fact. Ready for it. Window, double page, here's the new fact. You multiply that by the delta T, you multiply that by the area, and boom, you have a big one. That's it. They have an online calculator for that. I have my own online calculator for that, which you can use, so you didn't have to do punching the numbers. But, this is very important. There's a lot of jobs that want to do heat loss. Not a lot of people know how to do heat loss, and it's very essential. You go to a house, and somebody has six tons AC. It will be wise, that you don't have to replace the AC right away. Go out and do a heat loss calculation. 
I promise you, it wouldn't take you more than an hour tops, and you can charge for it. Sorry. But Cloud will let you know whether this AC is undersized or oversized. If it's undersized, probably it's not going to heat very well. It's going to be overworking, and eventually it will break. If it's oversized, it's going to cycle a lot. It's going to consume a lot of energy. It's not going to be comfortable. Okay? After a few examples, this will make more sense. Any question about this equation? Yeah. You always want to end up in a decimal, not a fraction. Is that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You end up with whatever you end up with. Yeah. So they always give you R. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They always get R. Okay. Might get you. And again, I am, I am not really concerned with numbers and calculations, as long as I see you, your trail of thoughts, guys. Uh, I don't care about the numbers. I care about what. But give me your thoughts. You know, if you punch the number wrong, I'm, I'm okay. I don't care. You know, eventually it's a field, you're gonna do a double check and you have a calculator, you have a program. But I wanna see this, you get the thoughts right and you get the process right. So don't worry too much about the numbers and nitpicking the numbers. <coughs> Tell me what you do, show me what number that you put in. Okay? So let's do this example quickly. So the same wall, so we have the area already. Made out of state brick, new factors are giving. DT is 50, area of 84, talk about the heat loss per hour. This is a very simple example. <laughs> so what are they asking for here? How much heat I'm losing from that wall? We agree? Yeah, then you saw it's giving per hour. So this is Q. The equation is area times fuel times delta T. Area, where's the area? H squared. Fuel factor? Times plus the BTU. Multiplying all these together, we're gonna have uh, 20 times 50, times 10,000. Say 10,000 or 1,000? 1,000, right? 1,000. So 1,000 BTU per hour. And the rest of the class will be variation of this. Yeah. Uh, units Say that again? Yeah. But we always looking for BTU per hour. And we always have consistent units. We're not doing a lot of conversions. That's enough, you know? This is enough nonsense for now. Let's not deal with units. So, units going to be always, uh, our area is always feet, no inches. Always feet. If you get inches, you convert. The feet, you convert the closest foot. If you have five inches, that's half a foot. Seven inches, a foot. We round up the next foot. Make sense? Always be feet. Always be feet. Uh, temperature, Fahrenheit. Heat loss, BTU per hour per foot square. It's the same. Uh, Okay, so we'll look at the answer here. This will do next, next class. Just let, let, let this sit a little bit, think about it, and uh, try to visualize that, that as, you go, as you go along. Think of this wall. This wall is affecting the outside. You're losing a lot of heat from the outside. In the winter time, you can touch the wall and it's very cold. The temperature outside is zero, the temperature is 70, you're losing a lot of heat. Uh, this heat depends on the area. There's no insulation whatsoever in the wall, so all the heat is escaping. And we cannot do that for the walls, windows, floors, attics, and provide some solution. Again, there's no point of pumping heat into a place that's leaking all over the place. Uh, we'll do something similar for the other type of heat loss. What are the two major heat loss in a house? 
What are they called? Uh, there's, there's two things. Transmission, that's transmission. And second, ta second type is what? Infiltration. Infiltration, thank you. So this is for transmission. I will do one for infiltration. What is infiltration? Air exchange. Yeah, air exchange, air leak. Whatever terminology you find easier to like uh, understand this. Again, it's uh, very, very simple things. And trust me, people appreciate that in the field when you know how to do these simple things. And we have two semesters. That's, a, that's around like six months to understand this. That's plenty. In some companies, they give you this whole thing in a week. Boom, boom, and you're done. I want to digest it slowly and have you understand it. And it's a good skill. If you take that exam, which you get a pass, you take this course. By November, you get a pass exam. Trust me, it will make you more hard. People will like that. All right, thank you. That's enough.